Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Thank God. It's time to read Bible. We finished Genesis yesterday. I have burden in my heart to share some more thoughts with brothers and sisters today. At the same time, we can also take the opportunity to have a brief review of the book of Genesis. Genesis has total 50 chapters. If we read one chapter per week, it takes one year to finish it. First of all, we should thank God for His grace so we, would, we could walk through the 50 chapters of the Genesis. And He had special grace and provision in every chapter so we can experience His provision and leading in our daily life. Secondly, I would like to thank brothers and sisters for your faithful company. You are willing to spend some time each day in God's words. Your company encouraged me to study the ministry of the words. I believe for most of us, year 2020 is a very special year. When we decided to study Genesis in December, we didn't expect that COVID, which broke out in February, would turn into a global pandemic. It is still impacting us as we're getting close to the end of the year. For most of us, it is not an easy thing. We are isolated in our daily lives. Jobs were interrupted. Finance was in crisis. On top of that, the global politics were unstable. In this chaotic world, thank God, His provision come upon our lives faithfully daily. The situation we are in is similar to the situation that mankind faced when God created the world. Through Genesis, we see that God always has grace. As long as we are willing to turn to Him, He will save us. Now we're getting close to the end of 2020. We have one more week to go. I encourage the saints to use this week to review the book of Genesis. Think about the leading that God had on you in the past one year. What special provision does he had in his words? What special lights did you see? We spent one year's time to read through Genesis. Let's use this last week of the year to review it and recall what you get out of it. How Jacob set up four pillars during the process of following God in his life. I hope that this year will be a milestone for us in following God. I believe that this might be the first time that some of you read through Genesis, but most of the saints might have read it, might have read it a couple of times. Did God say something special to you through this book this year? Please write them down as response to God's grace. I serve a writing Chinese church now. I ask the saints here to write down what they get out of Genesis. And one of the sisters is willing to edit them. She will collect all the articles and put them together into a book, into an e-book as a response to God's grace. I would like to invite saints in other areas and other churches. If you would like to participate, please write down your thoughts your names and the churches you are at and put them into e-file. Please send them to me before the end of the year. It will be easier if each church can assign one person to collect and put all the articles together and send them at one time. I know that some saints resend the audio file to different places. I would also like to ask the saints to collect the thoughts of the other saints that they send the file to. Once we put the Eve book together, I will send it back to all of you. It will be a testimony of all the saints regard uh, reading Genesis together in 2020. It will be an encouragement for each other too, just as what Hebrew 12 one says. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily in ensnails us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Though 2020 is full of disaster, with God's grace, we all live through it safely. Moreover, because of the provision of his words, we grew up, and we can be witness for God. In order to help the saints to review, 
I would like to use the following couple of minutes to have a general review of the structure of Genesis. The fifty chapters of Genesis can be divided into three big parts. The first part is Genesis chapter one and two, which talks about the creation of mankind. Genesis one, twenty six. Then God said, "Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dom dominions over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creepy things that creeps on the earth." God. Clearly reveal his purpose to create mankind. Sin hasn't entered into. Ha, hasn't entered in these two chapters. These two chapters correspond to the last two chapters of Bible, which is Revelation twenty one and twenty two. The problem of sin was resolved in Revelation chapter twenty. The purpose that God created mankind was accomplished in Genesis chapter one and two. We see God's purpose in creating mankind. We also see the different kind of building materials were spread all over the places through the whole entire Bible. When we get to Revelation chapter twenty one and twenty two, we see a well built new holy city, Jerusalem, coming down from the heaven. The building materials are no longer spreading all over the the places. They are putting together to build a new holy city, Jerusalem, in which God and His people dwell together. It helps us to be sure about God's faithfulness and His provision. The second part of Genesis is from Genesis chapter three to eleven. It brought in the four steps of fall of mankind. The first step: Adam ate the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. He disobeyed God's command. Sin entered into the world through one man. The consequence that it brought was the spirit of man died. The second step of the fall happened in the second generation of mankind. Cain was jealous of Abel because of the offering. He killed his brother Abel. A man who wanted to worship God but didn't know God and didn't have God became a murderer. Because of this second step of fall, man's soul was defiled. The third step of four, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Whom they chose, as a result, man became flesh, and the Lord said, "My spirit should not strive with man for ever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days should be one hundred and twenty years." A better translation is that my spirit will no longer strive with him. This is a sin against God, so God has to judge against the world. Flood came. Only the eight people of Noah's family were saved through the ark. God used rainbow as a sign of His covenant with mankind and the living creatures. He would not destroy all the things on the earth with flood anymore. Man has a new start on the earth after the flood. The three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, became the ancestor of Asian, African, and European. Soon, it brought the fourth step of fall of mankind. Men gathered together to build the Tower of Babel. They rebel against God as a group. So God confused their language and scattered them abroad from these over the face of all the earth. From there, over the the face of all the earth, the third part of the Genesis is the longest one. It covers from Genesis twelve to fifty. It describes the process that man received the call through the life experience of the th three main characters, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It reveals how God brought upon a group of people who received call from the Creator Being. Abraham was the first one. He answered God's call to follow God. Thus, he left Ur of Chaldean to go to the Promised Land, where he started his wandering life. He learned to live a life of altar and tent. He had weakness and failure, but because he did, he believed in God's promise. God let him experience that God was a God that caused those things which do not exist as though they did. When mankind didn't have hope, 
God let him have a son through his wife Sarah. With God's leading, he knew that God was a God who gave life to the dead. It was revealed on the event that he offered Isaac. On Abraham, we saw that God called and Abraham follow. On Isaac, we saw that by faith he inherited the blessing that God gave to Abraham in his life. He enjoyed all the things that his father Abraham prepared for him, especially in his marriage. It's a good foreshadowing of Christ and the church. In Jacob's life experience, we see the transformation and molding work of Holy Spirit. He was changed from Jacob, who liked to seize, to Israel, who gave others blessing. On Jacob, we see that God dealt with him in his life. God took things away from him and empty him. On his son Joseph, we saw God's sovereignty in his life. Genesis chapter twelve to fifty also tell the experience that each Christian who is willing to follow God should have, receiving call. Call as Abraham, put down everything to follow God, like Isaac, enjoy God's provision, and is made up of by God's words. Spend the whole life to dig the well, dig out the stones in our hearts, big or small, so that we can become a vessel that carry God's grace and abundance. We also need to have the experience of Jacob to experience God's work on us. We should allow Holy Spirit. To form Christ's character on us, as we are mature in our life, we can then be like Joseph to rule in life. Genesis is the first book of Bible. It contains the seeds of the truth of Bible. As we read Genesis, we might have the same feeling. It was so great and glorious at the beginning. How amazing is God's creation! Although mankind kept falling. Continue to have weakness and stumble. God had been having promise and grace. He always opened a new and living way for us. We also see that God put good examples such as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in front of us, so that we can learn from them and follow them. It seems like God did a lot in Genesis, but it ended with Jacob and Joseph's death in chapter fifty. It was such a glorious beginning, but it ended with two coffins. It tells that God's work was not done yet. Torah is the first five books of Bible. We see God's creation and promise in Genesis. We will see that God came to save in Exodus. He saved people from the slavery. He instructed them to build tabernacle according to God's revelation, so that men could come before God through offering the sacrifice. God could also dwell with His people. When we get to Leviticus, the whole book contains God's words and the foreshadowing of Christ. It contains the laws of offering sacrifice, the laws of the food, and the laws of the feasts. All these point to Christ. Numbers tells us how to form groups and armies, and how to follow God as a group. That is, how can the church today move ahead? In Deuteronomy, God once again spoke to those Israelites who were about to enter the Promised Land. In our life of following God, our old self is perishing day after day, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. At the end, only a new self can enter into Christ, the Promised Land, to enjoy His abundant provision. Let's end our Genesis Bible reading here. We read the first book of Bible here. Next year, God willing, we will read the first book of New Testament, Matthew. May God continue to give us grace, guide us, and lead us, and provide for us. Let's pray. Lord, we're full of thanksgiving. Thank you for leading us through 2020. Thank you for providing for us and comfort us with the words of Genesis. We give you thanks and worship for what we got this year. We ask that you continue to give us grace and lead us. Give us grace and provision in the new year. Help us to become witness for your gospel. Bless my life. Pray in Jesus' name.